Let's talk about the most common problem I'm seeing with students, calligraphers that are learning scripts like Spencerian or business penmanship, which you might know as Palmer Method or American Cursive. And let's talk about the most common problems I'm seeing with people that are learning these scripts for the first time. Um, and I'm talking about specifically about these two scripts because they, you know, business penmanship really derived was derived from Spencerian, so they're they're in the same family of script, and this same problem, you know, regardless of which script you're learning, is something you're probably going to run into, okay? And it is this problem of writing, really, these comp uh, a compressed version of the script horizontally. So often, what I'm see what I'm seeing, let's say we do the letter U. I'll see the student, they'll draw, they'll write the letter U. They'll start with a pretty good entry stroke like that. And then they'll go to this really compressed finish to the letter like that. All right. And as you can see, this entry stroke is on a nice connective slant. You know, we're looking for a 30 degree connective slant with these scripts. And these other strokes, the stroke in the middle and then this exit stroke is on a much steeper slant. All right, more like something like 45 degrees, over 40 for sure. All right, it's that compression, you know, and that, that produces this compressed letter where you have this nice spacing here and then you have a very compressed spacing at the end of the letter. And if we look at, you know, I have an exemplar it's from the champion method right here. You can see how wide this script is. If you look at any of the letters, you see how much space each of these letters takes up horizontally. It's a very wide spacing. Same for Spencerian. And the whole reason behind that is because these, these scripts were traditionally taught with arm movement. Okay, students were taught to make these connective strokes with the arm. All right, see how my fingers aren't even really moving as I make this stroke? It's all arm movement. Then as I go down, that's when you can bring the arm into play on like an eye, for example. And then as you exit, you exit with the arm again. And when you're using the arm, you have a lot of freedom of motion. You can make these wide connective strokes with the arm, okay? So that's how the script was taught, using that arm movement, and therefore they had, it was all designed around these, these wide spaces, horizontal spaces between letters and within letters. But now today, most people in the modern world are opting not to learn the traditional arm movement of these scripts, which is totally fine. But a problem you're going to run into if you're not learning the arm movement, if you're not writing them with arm movement, is that you're going to have this tendency to, con to compress the script. All right, And that, if you're trying to learn the script as it was traditionally written, then you're going to want to avoid that compression because you're not going to achieve the look of the script that you're seeing in these old documents and in these old exemplars. All right. Now, a couple of ways you can get around this or work on this problem if you're just starting out. Um, one is to size down the writing. So, you know, this is a pretty big X height. It's like over a quarter of an inch high. Um, so pretty big. You might want to try writing a little smaller. And that makes it a little easier to space things out. All right. I'm going to have to move the paper a little bit, which I'll get into next. If I'm just doing a series of eyes, it's a little easier to space those out. Then if I went to the other extreme and went and wrote really big, it's kind of hard for me to write and the letter I at this hall of an X height um, at the proper spacing. You know, I really have to stretch my hand to cover that horizontal space that this letter is taking up. All right, so write a little smaller. That's a way to, to space things, help make it easier to space things out. Um, the next thing is to just really stretch things out with your hand. You know, practice stretching things out. Practice over exaggerating the spacing between these letters. All right. So I can do an I to an E like this. And that's definitely like way more spaced out than I want those letters to be. I would never write a word that was that spaced out. But this gets me feeling what it feels like to space these letters out. Now I can go back once I know what it feels like to space them out, you know, too much. Then I can bring it back to a more regular spacing with that 30 degree connective slant that I'm going for. Okay. So practice writing things really spaced out. It'll be uncomfortable, be hard to stretch your hand that far, um, but it'll really 
allow you to learn what it feels like to stretch things more than you thought you could. All right. And then the last thing is just working on moving your writing zone across the page. All right. So you have a restricted writing zone. I can write from here to here to about there. That's about all I can do before I need to move my hand or move the page. All right. So you need to just become cognizant of your writing zone when you're getting out of your writing zone and when you need to move that writing zone. So if you're writing, if I'm seeing, I'm doing the letter U, for example, I might get here and I might move the page a little bit. And I go into an M. Now I'm going to move the page again. So you just have to get used to doing this. Because if you don't want to move the page, you're going to write like this instead. You're going to do U. Um, and you're going to start compressing it because you want to fit everything in before you have to move your hand again. All right. This is what we're going for. That's that traditional look. This is not the traditional look. All right. That's a compressed version of this script. We're not going for that. All right. Um, something that might help you is to use guidelines um, that have both the main slant and the connective slant overlaid on them. All right. So you can see we have the main slant here. And then we have our connective slant here um, overlaid on the guidelines here. And what that does is it just makes it very easy for me to write a consistent hand because I have these guidelines. As I'm writing, drawing, or writing the different parts of the letters, I can compare them to the guidelines on the page and know, all right, if I'm doing a connective slant, it needs to follow this connective slant line. If I'm doing a downstroke on the main slant, it needs to follow these downstroke lines, all right? And they're just little visual aids that, that help you write as you go along in real time, all right? And these guidelines are from my course at consistentcursive.com. Um, I had a lot of students sign up, and I'm seeing this issue in a, most of the students, if not all. And that's why I've put out these, these guidelines that have the connective slant on them to help the students learn. So if you want to get these guidelines, if you want to take the course, it's 100% free. Go to consistentcursive.com. I got over 40 videos, over five hours of content that really goes deep into, you know, all of these fundamentals of the script. So if you're having, if you don't really know what main slant or connective slant, what, what that's all about, take the course, consistentcursive.com. You'll learn all about that and much more, and you'll get access to these worksheets, to these guidelines, so you can use them in your practice.